It's your council. Take part in it. Learn about the PD Area Council coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Allen Clemens campsite at Camp Coker in Society Hill. We're focused on the 75th anniversary of Camp Coker and the PD Area Council of the Boy Scouts, and we're visiting with one of its past presidents, Rocky Gannon. Good morning, Rocky. Thanks Good so much morning. for being with us this morning. Thank you. Incredible opportunity to be here in the, in the middle of the week, thinking about all the activities going on at Camp Coker, to be out here in this incredible weather, beautiful day. Let's pray it's, uh, it stays this way yes. for the summer. South goers. Carolina weather. Absolutely. All the kids that will be out here this summer, I think the, the camp's booked. Yes, book solid for the summer. That is amazing. <laughs> and I, you know, I sit here and think, uh, wish we could stay away from the mosquitoes and the yeah. bugs, but the director of the show reminded me, we are at a camp, Greg. That's you correct. can't get rid of mosquitoes. <laughs> Rocky, are you originally from the area? No, I was uh, born in New Jersey uh, 78 years ago. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's amazing. And yeah. what brought you down to South Carolina? Somewhere... About uh, 52 years ago, I was stationed in the Air Force in South Carolina and married a girl from South Carolina. Is that that? So that that's my main excuse when I retired from the Air Force. We came back to Florence to live. And that girl you married, she is uh, still with you? Yeah. Don't know why, but she's still with me. Yeah. Coming up on 53 years. Congratulations, yeah. Rocky. Do you all have other family here in the area? Uh my wife's family is all around in Louisville, Florence, King Street. Mm. My wife's from King Street. Uh, my family, unfortunately, all except one brother has passed on, mm. and one brother is in Florida, Clearwater. Mm. When did you develop an interest in airplanes and flying? And obviously, we've got to talk about your distinguished career as a pilot and being up in the air for so, so many hours. I can't wait to hear a little bit about that. But when did you first get an interest in aviation? I guess I was about eight, nine years old. And uh, I used to hang around the airport in Ocean City, New Jersey. And a pilot had a two-seater. He'd take people up for a dollar, give them a ride around the island. And one day he had... One person, he said, you want to go? So, yeah. So from that day on, I was hooked on airplanes. Uh, my father had passed away, and my mother wasn't aware that I was out flying. So I made the point then to help the mechanics and help change the oil, and every time there was an empty seat, I'd get a ride. Mm. And then as fate would have it, while I was still a teenager, we entered World War II. Mm -hmm. And the Army Air Corps had a special program for 17-year-old kids. You couldn't mm -hmm. be 18. If you could pass their test, you could go to pilot training. Mm -hmm. And to the amazement of my teachers and my principal, I passed everything flying colors and left, went off to basic training. Then I was sent to college in Ohio and then to pilot training. Uh, while well, my junior year was just finishing up in high school. Mm, Rocky. <laughs> that is amazing. And, and you went on to a, a, a remarkable 37-year career Yes. in uh, the Army Air Corps. It was uh, good to me. I wanted to travel, wanted to fly. And uh, about the time my high school class was graduating, I had a B-17 Flying Fortress crew. Mm. And... And when the war ended in Europe, uh, I went into B-29s at 20 and was flying B-29s when World War II ended. So had no place to go but to fly airplanes. God. So I stayed on, got a regular commission, and having so much fun, I forgot what time it was till I was uh, 55 years old and <laughs> was getting time to retire. That is incredible. Rocky, what's it like to be up in a plane piloting? Or what is that like to be in the air? Got to be careful how I say this because I'm married, but it's probably one of the greatest experiences. Uh, 
you leave all your problems behind you. Uh, I have tucked away in my cranium moments uh, 40,000 feet, nighttime, by myself, no sound, and look at a full moon and eight miles below me, I'll see uh, cities sparkling in the snow. You can see 150 miles in each direction of 40,000 feet. So you'll see a city that looks like it's six inches across, and it'll be Denver. Looks like that, and it's sparkling. It's a fantastic feeling that you can't have unless you've been there and done that. Rocky, it's, <laughs> we can stop the interview on that. <laughs> My God, that is amazing just to yeah. take that uh, image away for the morning to go to work or do whatever folks mm -hmm. are doing. That's an amazing, that's an amazing. Very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, truly. And obviously you went through that 37-year uh, career, that service, all the years in the air otherwise. I think I saw that you received 50-plus military awards, decorations, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, Bronze Star, I think 10 yeah. Air Medals, and Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. Over and over, I'm sure you've seen, and obviously you're wearing a, a couple of uh, a Boy Scout insignias, as well as I think I saw earlier this morning you had a jacket from Ocean City, from New mm -hmm. Jersey, and all the uh, all the merit badges. merit badges you received at such an early age, which really yeah. set the stage for so many more medals you would wear as an adult. Yeah. Incredible. Rocky, what did you do following your retirement from military service? I retired, of all places, Las Vegas. Mm. Uh, started my career in Miami Beach, so mm -hmm. that's, that's good, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was hired by Caesars Palace to be their aviation consultant. Mm -hmm. They were doing battle with the FAA over putting taller buildings in Vegas. Mm -hmm. At that time, they didn't have too many tall buildings. Uh, won a couple court cases for them, mm -hmm. and I became a consultant <laughs> all of a sudden. And uh, because of the notoriety of the case, I got a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, we had two hotel fires. You may remember the MGM and the Hilton mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people that were saved were saved by helicopters coming up on the roof. So I became an expert on getting heliports put on top of hotels. Hmm. And uh, so it just grew from there. And because I had spent about 14 years living overseas, I had a lot of contacts. I got into the third world market of airports, international consulting. So I went on consulting internationally. Did that for about a half a dozen years and had moved back to Florence, got the job as the executive director of the Florence Regional Airport. Didn't ask for it, wasn't looking for it, but I was asked to take it. Uh, again, wonderful challenge. And I did that for eight and a half years and retired. I was getting up right at 70. So then I went back into international consulting in uh, interesting places like the New Republic of Macedonia, going in looking at their two airports, uh, trying to turn them into civilian airports to start getting tourists in. Beautiful country. Just mm -hmm. fabulous. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And trying to turn a make base into a commercial airport was a challenge in Emirates. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly what I've done until the last couple of years, and now it's all community service, mm. Boy Scouts, Red Cross. Absolutely. You, community service is so much a focus there, and you said you, you mentioned Boy Scouts, Red, Red Cross. When you think about Boy Scouts, as your mind goes back, Rocky, do you have a first memory of, uh, of your scouting activities? very vivid. <laughs> it's a long story, but I'll shorten it. My first scout meeting, uh, we had a doctor giving us uh, some training on first aid burns and so forth, mm -hmm. and was in the scout cabin that we had. Uh, knock at the door, state trooper came and said he needed to talk to the doctor. So he called the doctor back. The doctor came back to us and apologized. He said there had been an emergency that he had to leave, uh, found out the next day that the Hindenburg had crashed 
at Lakehurst, New Jersey. Ironically, just before we went inside for our scout meeting, the Hindenburg went over Ocean City, and we were outside waving to the people on board. You are kidding. Forty minutes later, it crashed at uh, Lakers. That's my first scout meeting. <laughs> first memories. <laughs> you will never forget scouting uh, then. And, yeah. uh, was there anything you took away from I that you were riddled with? Of course, you didn't know until much later what had actually happened. But yeah. uh, I'm sure just having the guy running the meeting uh, take off, uh, yeah. who was training uh, first aid, there probably wasn't a lot from the meeting. No. But... Uh, other than that, uh, scouting has probably helped me almost every day. Mm -hmm. uh, like Bernie Moore, I've stayed with it for 66 years mm -hmm. uh, overseas in Germany, Japan, uh, out in Las Vegas, because it meant so much to me and it prepared me for adulthood. Mm -hmm. uh, I could sit here for an hour and tell you the different times that I used things that scouting had taught me. I'd love to do that. Unfortunately, Martha Stewart living would not allow us to do that. Martha Stewart uh, comes on at 8 o'clock. When did you become involved with the PD Area Council, Rocky? And what prompted that initial, no. original involvement? Well, it was prompted by the first thing I usually did when I went to a new town was get involved in scouting. So when I moved from Vegas, where I was on the council there, mm -hmm. came back to Florence, I was here a month or two, and I went by the scout office and told them my experience and said I'd like to help whatever I could fundraising. Mm -hmm. So in 1986, uh, about 17 years ago, I got involved with local scouting in the Florence area, the Atapa, and then worked my way up through the different chairs. And uh, Four years ago, five years ago, I became the president of the mm -hmm. PD Council. Mm -hmm. Found it very challenging. Uh, scouting was going through one of these periods where it had flattened out. Uh, weren't getting new people in. Uh, this camp was just falling apart. So started to get the right people, the business leaders involved in getting money. And we doubled the number of scouts in about two years. Uh, tripled the number of adults, volunteers, helping scouting. And uh, so it's back now where I think it should be, mm -hmm. getting as many kids as we can at home. God, Rocky, there's so many more questions I want to ask you. Unfortunately, we've just got less than a minute. But I think one of the most important questions to ask, particularly as you tie in that it's had an impact on you throughout your life, what has scouting meant to you, Rocky? It's been probably the guiding light, uh, you know, trustworthy, be prepared, do a good turn daily, all these things that you must practice every day in life. I learned those from scouting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've carried those through life, those early moments of training that I received in scouting. Mm -hmm. It was those early moments of training. 66 years ago that prompted Rocky Gannon to not only get into the Army Air Corps but then have an amazingly distinguished career, 37 plus years before going into international consulting, married to the same woman for almost 53 years. To think of that commitment alone is uh, something that Boy Scouts, and not the Boy Scouts alone, but the Boy Scouts sure have a lot to do with. Rocky yeah. Gannon, thanks yes. so much for being thanks, with us Craig. this morning. Appreciate it. Stay tuned to Dr. Charles Muse and his son coming up next on Carolina Beach. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning, we're at the Alan Clemens campsite at Camp Coker in Society Hill. We're focused on the camp's 75th anniversary here at the PD Area Council, and we're visiting with Dr. Charles Muse, the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Florence Darlington Technical College, and his son, Matthew, who's a life scout working on his eagle. Good morning, y'all. Morning. morning. Thanks so much for being with us this yeah, morning. It's good to be here. To get out here and to think about so much going on, obviously following Rocky Gannon, the excitement is kicking off uh, 
so many of the scouters arrived here last Friday. It'll be here. The summer's going to be packed. It's going to be a crazed uh, summer out here. So much going on. Dr. Muse, real quick about yourself. Were you originally sure. from the area? I'm from Hamlet originally. My mother is from Florence County. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, are, do you still have family in the area? Still do. A lot, a lot of cousins. My, mm -hmm. my grandmother had ten brothers and sisters and down in the Tampa Care area. Okay. So I have a lot of cousins, cousins in the county. When did you assume that position or this position at Florence Darlington Technical College? About 14 years ago. Is that right? What mm -hmm. all does it entail? It entails developing programs to support business and industry in the area and doing training for mm -hmm. uh, employees in the area. Okay. What have you been doing prior to taking on that position? I had a similar position in Georgia, at Georgia Southwestern University mm -hmm. in America's Georgia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When, when you think about scouting, is this something that was a, a part of your life as a youngster? Yes. Yes. I had a very good experience in a, a pack at my church, mm -hmm. in a cub pack. And I started out as uh, seven years old and worked up through the Weevilo program and the Air of Light. And our church did not have a troop, so I had to go all the way across town to another church to get mm -hmm. a troop. And uh, one reason I'm in Scouts now is that uh, that particular situation was, was not really good for me. And I missed out on some good adult leadership and eventually got out of Scouts. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved to Florence and my boys started growing up, I wanted to get involved and make sure that there was some good adult leadership for all the scouts in the area. One thing you said earlier this morning was that uh, seven was an optimal age. You got in at seven. It wasn't the experience you you really uh, thought you could have gotten out of scouting. Your son Matthew, on the other hand, started in at seven, and he is rolling along. Yeah, he's had a very good experience. Yeah, seven. He started out with what's called a Tiger Cub program, Okay. which is an introductory orientation program for seven-year-old um, youth in the area. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Have all of your children been involved in scouting? Yes. I've got three boys. Three teenagers, if you can believe that. <laughs> I can't imagine. It's hard, hard to keep up with. Uh, and two of them are Eagle Scouts. They've mm -hmm. had a very good experience. As a matter of fact, they came up to Camp Coker every year they could and became uh, staff members and counselors here on the staff at Camp Coker every summer. Is that right? Matthew, what's that like having older brothers that... Uh that have both been in, in scouting, both Eagle Scouts, and both spending time up here at Coker. It's pretty cool because then after they do something, you can take it and they'll give you pointers on stuff. Abs have, have you pursued merit badges that they didn't get? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> really? Kind of follows the common track we see here on your uh, right leg there. You've got an incredible, uh, I know viewers probably can't uh, see that. You've got an incredible number of merit badges on there. That is unbelievable. That's a huge commitment, getting out there and doing that, isn't it? It is, It yes. really is. It really is. When you think about uh, your experience, even though it was not as strong as it could have been mm -hmm. growing up, do you think uh, those experiences were instrumental in getting your boys involved in scouting? Oh, yeah. Clearly. Yeah, yeah it, the scouting is a wonderful program. Uh, when I look at my two older boys, uh, Thomas is going off to college next year. He learned to, um, to be a lifeguard right here at Camp Coker, and he works now at the YMCA. Mm. And my, my second son, Alex, who's 16 now, he's going to be working at the YMCA this summer as a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. So they mm. picked up those skills through the Boy Scout program. Mm -hmm. Dr. Muse, when you think about the events that stand out in, in your mind, is there any highlight of your years or involvement with Boy Scouts that truly stands out in your mind? Yes, the uh, National Jamboree in 2001. Mm. I was a scout master for that group. Mm -hmm. I had four adults including myself, took 36 scouts up to A.P. Hill, Virginia for 10 days. Mm. And we brought 36 of them back. <laughs> that is the same ones. <laughs> Listen to that. How about it? Your dad's a, a magician. What you, for viewers who may not understand what's a jamboree, what exactly is that? Jamboree is an opportunity for scouts to use all the skills that they learn in the scouting program. You, you must be a first-class scout in order to, to qualify to participate in that. So you've got to have the scouting skills. And when you get up to AP Hill, they give you a piece of ground, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So you've got to create a tent city. You've got to be able to cook your own meals. You've got to be able to live in the weather, whether it's cold or hot or rainy or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So it really tests the leadership skills of the scouts, and it is a scout program. The adults there are just to sort of oversee. We do not lead the activities. The scouts have to lead them themselves. Wow. Matthew, were you a part of that jamboree? Yes, sir, I was. You went up there in 01 to Virginia. Yes, sir. How exciting. What was that like? That was very exciting. I got to learn a lot more skills. Uh, 
I did not know. And uh, it's not only it's not only about badges and and uh, skills. It's actually about fun. You can have a lot of fun with it. I got to uh, scuba dive and and I got to uh, look at some uh, real live uh, M16 weapons. Is uh, that right? Army weapons. Weapons. That's very cool, very absolutely. Cool. What about, it? can you put into words what scouting has meant for you? Mm, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, scouting <laughs> for me is uh, meant for a great opportunity to uh, get away from like school and, and uh, like your house and things and to get fresh air and learn other skills that you would normally not learn, like uh, making a tent and um, uh, like learning how to make uh, staffs from trees and a bunch of uh, skills for like uh, life saving. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Truly instrumental things that you'll carry even later in life, even if you're never asked to make a tent again. Just that ability to, uh, do you normally put up a tent by yourself, or is that with someone else's help? Is it something that two people have to do together? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it Definitely. really is, yeah. For viewers who may not know about to putting up tents, it may be more than two people. I, yeah. it's, it's a pretty big deal, isn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah, I bet it is. So you, just that opportunity of working together is so much of what it means. Yes. Mm -hmm. Matthew, when you think about uh, uh, pursuing the rank of Eagle, you're, you're pushing for that. Yes, sir. What's motivating you in that direction, you think? Because your two brothers did, or...? Well, I think about how when um, my brother Thomas and Alex, when they got uh, their eagle, how proud they were, and how other people were proud of them, and it was a great celebration, and how uh, they learned so many things. And I look at them now, how they're not, uh, not in the scouts anymore, but how they use, how they still use that, even in the uh, daily world. Yeah. I use that, so... That is great. That is important when you can sit back and look at that. Think of older brothers or, uh, or obviously your dad and his involvement in scouting. When you think about uh, surely that 2001 trip to Virginia to the Jamboree, you think about your trip to Camp Coker and visiting up here. What has Camp Coker meant to you? Uh, Camp Coker is uh, really an exciting place to go. And I think it's meant to me because you, you learn a lot of other skills without, um, I mean, when you're at the Jamboree, they had a bunch of things and all a bunch of things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, here, there's uh, a lot of things that you get to learn, which they don't do up there. Like, you can do your life saving and you get to shoot uh, shotguns mm -hmm. and uh, learn how to aim just right to hit the target. And, uh, it's, it's a lot of practical things, yeah. absolutely. Dr. Hughes, why do you think it's important that Camp Coker remain available to, uh, to scouts here in the PD Area Council? We talked about leadership earlier, the young people, mm -hmm. but there's also the team, team building aspect mm -hmm. of Camp Coker, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm -hmm. The other thing is values and ethics mm -hmm. that sometimes you see missing. And the Scouts program provides that for Scouts, particularly here at Camp Coker. Coker. Because again, we try to create an environment in which the youth lead, and the youth have to put together teams to accomplish their tasks. Absolutely. One other thing we didn't mention when we started, Dr. Muse, you're the president of Learning for Life, yes. which is, that's under the umbrella arm of the PD Area Council. What exactly, right. for viewers who may not be familiar with that, what is Learning for Life? Learning for Life is a program which, it's, it's a curriculum driven program that that we can uh, put into the school systems, mm -hmm. and it provides uh, ethics and values training, the values that you need to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. So any youth in the schools, uh, girls and boys, can participate in that program. Absolutely. A vehicle to get the PD Area Council involved with not only mentoring young boys, right. but also mentoring young girls sure. and young, young girls. women. That's young right. Women. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dr. Muse, a member of the PD Area Council Executive Board, what programs are directly under, direct, under your direction? Is it almost exclusively learning for life? Learning for life, right. Okay, yeah. yes. absolutely. You're still involved to a great degree with activities that go on within the board. And uh, Have you visited uh, Camp Coker much? Many times. Many, many times. Many times, yes. I have uh, completed my ordeal here as well as my brotherhood in the Order of the Era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as a matter of fact, during the ordeal, ceremonies we had a thunderstorm 
and we all got soaking wet. So I'll, I'll never forget that experience. <laughs> I'm sure you won't. Did you come up here as a volunteer when your sons were up here on their different experiences? Oh, up yes. Here? Yeah. Been up here many times, many campfires. Now, uh, what does scouting do, I mean, in, in father-son instances like that? Do they encourage fathers to go off on a different part of the camp to be mentors for boys other than their sons? or Usually you work with the troop that comes up. Okay. And you need, uh, we have uh, uh, at least two adults mm -hmm. for each troop. In other words, you need uh, two deep leaderships, what they call two adult leadership. Mm -hmm. And so a scout master that comes up here needs some assistance. And we have a number of, of assistant scout masters in our troop. Our troop is 476. Mm -hmm. Troop 476. Mm -hmm. And you think of all the benefits your sons have derived from the scouting experience. Are there are there just a couple you can think that have been primary? Yes. Uh, let me give you a good example. I've seen Thomas, my oldest son, in situations where he was teaching young people, young people how to swim, things like that, and he didn't know I was watching. And his patience and his abilities as a teacher, <clears throat> excuse me, and his leadership skills came through, and, and I know for sure that, that he picked those things up in the scouting program. Mm, that's fantastic. Lastly, Dr. Muse, how has your, your scouting experience helped you in your adult life? Again, the, the leadership, the values training, uh, particularly the values, to see that there's still an organization in this country that has the same values upon which this country was founded is very important. We need to keep that organization strong. Absolutely. And keeping that organization strong has been recognized by four Muse men, starting off with uh, Dr. Charles Muse, the president for Learning for Life, passing down to his son Thomas and obviously Alex and now Matthew, following in that pursuit for the uh, rank of Eagle. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. Call 843-662-6306 to learn how you can make a positive impact in the lives of our youth.